Hi, well what we've got here is a Samsung Optical Smart Hub. Now this actually came out in 2012 and I didn't really realise they were out until earlier on this year. And what I've decided to do is because they're going so cheap on uh, Amazon, for £19.99 here in the UK, I thought I'd try one. Because I have heard some bad reviews about it, but also some good reviews. So here is a little unboxing video for you. Okay, so what the Optical Smart Hub actually does is allow you to play, say, DVDs on your iPad or iPhone or your Android device. Or, of course, you could just use it as a standard optical DVD player for your um, computer. And also a DVD writer and CD writer. It works on Windows, Mac, it works on iOS and Android as well. So, let's take a look in the actual box itself. So if I just undo it and pop this to one side. As you can see inside the box we have the actual hub itself. Some power cables and units. And a big block transformer there. Take those out and whip that out as well. Just put that to one side for the moment. We've also got some, well, some um, CDs, to DVDs or whatever with some uh, software on. It looks like Nero is included on it. Quick Start Guide, uh, Contact Support, and USB cable. So we've got loads of them as it is, but always good to have another one. So let's just pop the box away and have a look at the actual optical drive itself. So here it is. Let me just zoom in a little bit for you to see. So this is the optical drive. And we'll just whip the uh, plastic wrapping off it. I suspect this will be a fingerprint magnet as usual. All these companies like to make things as glossy as possible, forgetting, probably, because they probably never clean themselves, that it actually is a fingerprint magnet. Mm. Just a little bit more on the front there. And there we are. And that is the Samsung Smart Hub Optical. On the back we have USB port. Uh, I think that's for connecting say a pen drive or something so you can actually use it as a NAS device. That's the USB port for plugging to your computer. You can use it as a standard DVD drive. That is an Ethernet port and that's where your, your actual power supply goes into. On the front Jack button, uh, access light, and probably an emergency jack button as well. Okay, so I'll just have a look at some of the other bits. What we have here the UK, not very good at undoing packages with one hand, or two hands even, looking over a camera. So, what I'll do is I'll unpack all the cables and that and come back to you in a moment. Okay, now I've got everything set up, kind of thing anyway. Powers go into the new optical drive and it's set up with the Wi-Fi and the powers so it's all booted up and ready. I've got my iPad here with the actual whoops with the actual software as well included. So if I go into that at the moment that's what comes up and then it tries to find device and it can't find it. So what I've got to do now is look underneath my device for the SSID and the password and link it up to my iPad as you would do any other wireless network. So I just go into settings on there and then go into, doo -doo -doo, where are we, Wi-Fi there. Okay, now it probably does come up probably there so I'll just have a quick look on the bottom of the smart hub okay yeah I've got the 
password so there is the actual device it has come up there so if I tap on that it will then ask me for a password so we'll be back in a moment okay so I put the password in so I'll just press join now oh and we've got an error message so just bear with me a moment and I'll see what I can do okay so as my iPad wouldn't actually connect to the smart optical smart hub what I decided to do was try it on my iPhone so what I'll do first of all is actually show you just exactly how to download the application that you need um, if you want to use that that is so if you go into search at the bottom on your iPhone or iPad and you go into your search box here in the app store and then you want to type in smart hub and then search and then that is the actual application you need there Okay, as I've only got two stars, it isn't that fantastic, I must admit. That is the actual application that you need uh, to access the Smart Optical Hub on your iPhone. So what I'll do is I'll go into my Smart Hub app there. And that is what comes up when you go into it. Now mine isn't actually connected to my Optical Smart Hub at the moment. Um, because it's connected to the main router so I can do this air server but I'll just show you exactly what you do once you've got your iPhone connected so it does seem to work with the iPhone is you can actually go into this cog wheel at the top that's highlighted and then you click on this here device settings and that brings you if I just close my air server down into this website here which I've got up on my Mac now if you don't have an iPhone and you don't want to use your iPhone for actually setting this up, there is two other ways you can do it. You can either access this website on your computer or you can run the installation program if you've got a Windows computer following the quick start guide. So what you need to do is find out the IP address of the optical smart hub from your router. Okay, so mine has signed it to 192.168.0. 58 okay and then it comes up with this page here and this is the same page that you get if you access it through your iPhone through the smart hub app ask you for a password initially there is no password so you just click login and then this comes up here and you've got three sections on this side here on the left hand side what you want to do first of all is go into wireless settings okay make sure wireless is enabled and then set up your SSID if you want to change it. Um, leave your wireless mode to its usual. Um, and then you can set the channel. Channel's normally on auto, but if you want to set it to another one, I set it to nine. And then you can also set your password up as well. Click save, and then that's done. You can, if you want, set your time up. Um, just set your uh, time zone and the time server for getting it but it doesn't seem to keep the time every time you unplug it it doesn't actually go back and search for the time so you keep having to click on this update time button so it does seem a bit pointless to be honest yeah, let's grab the new date and time there yeah. next thing you want to do is do a firmware update okay so my firmware update firmware was about TW02 when I got mine there's a button here what normally says live update if you've not got the current version so click on that and that will do the update and then it restart and everything so we'll go back into the uh, web based interface next thing you want to do and I found this out by accident really is this ISCSI option here now this is actually enabled by default what it allows Windows to do is actually access the optical drive wirelessly Bit like remote disk works on a Mac. Now I'm not going to be using this optical drive with a Windows computer so I decided to disable it, saved it and then went back to my iPad and guess what? It worked. No problem at all. So there you are, three options. If you can get it connected to your iPhone then install the Smart Hub app and access the this web based interface through that to set it up. If you've got a Windows computer, you can use the provided disk and software for doing that. Or if you don't have either of those, then you can use your just a standard web browser 
I've actually found out the IP address that the optical drive has been assigned by your router and go into it and set it up like this. Make sure you do plug the optical drive into the router by Ethernet to start with. Once you've got it all set up, then you can unplug it and it should work without any problem. Okay, so let's go and have a look at my iPad. So here we are back at my iPad now and as you can see it's actually connected up to this, the optical smart hub via the access point that this gives off and this is the actual application that you go and use okay it isn't the best as I did explain um, it has only got two stars on the app store but it does its job and um, you have got some different options you've got your DVD player you've got video player so you can actually plug a, a USB device into the back of this and you can access videos off that got a music player uh, audio CD player so you can actually put an audio CD in here as well got photo backups, you can actually burn discs on this with this application supposedly and you've also got a basic file manager as well ok and for some reason it messes up and does when you do different things now what I'll do is I'll quickly show you it playing a DVD ok so that's the actual disc tray coming out I'll just grab all of my DVDs Okay, I've got a Simpsons DVD here, which I'll just undo and get a disc out from Series 7. So I'll just pop that in there. Hopefully, it's a bit tough for getting in. There we are. Shut that up. Turn the volume down just so I don't get any uh, copyright issues on YouTube. Okay, and it seems to be reading it okay. Click on the tap on the DVD player, and then it comes up with these options here. I've got to turn it round at this point, then it comes up Smart Hub DVD. If I zoom in on that, I don't know if you can actually see it there. Smart Hub DVD server. So I'll tap on OK and then hopefully it should actually load up. Yeah, as you can see, DVD resume available. I'll just click no for that. I've already tried it, that's why. And then it comes up with all the copyright information. Okay, it keeps buffering throughout, and then you can just alter the screen aspect ratio if you wish if you see Simpsons the earlier episodes are in uh, old square format, old 4-3 format uh, I don't think I can skip all this no and then disc 1 episode 7 you get the Menus all work fine, and then you can actually use your scroll, uh, so your finger to scroll down, supposedly, and then double tap to go into different things. So I've gone into least of the vegetarian there, so I'll just tap on, double tap on that. You can see DVD constantly reading, it and it's buffering at the moment, so it has to buffer. And there we are. As I said, you can alter the aspect if you if you want. There isn't many aspects for this because it is a square picture. The only problem with this app is you do get your title bar right at the top constantly. There's no actual way of getting rid of that like there is on the normal um, normal video player on the iPad and iPhone. Got information. I don't know what that does. That just tells you a bit more about the actual. Uh, DVD and you got your, whoop, We're going to start. your path, fast forward, uh, pause, you can do all that and then you can just tap that and it will back to menu as well. Okay, so that is it. It is a bit iffy as I said to set up. It isn't the best of programs um, but it does work as a DVD player and you can actually access it if you've got something 
like I've got on here, I've got a program called um, File Explorer, which is this guy here, this app here. Uh, you can actually access it on this as well, which is quite handy. Um, at the, to start with, your username and password is Smart Hub. You can change that, which I will do. And then you can actually play videos through here. You've got to go and find the video through the VOB file. And I'm not actually sure whether it plays properly either because unsupported, you've got to click yes, VLC. You go into VLC then. And I don't know if it'll play. It does, it's probably because it's all copyrighted, it doesn't actually play very well. Certain other DVDs that aren't copyrighted will play fine. But you can access the device itself through this file explorer. It probably is a bit better of a file explorer to access your USB and that sort of thing. Anyway, hope this has been of help to you and see you again next time. Thanks.